I'd all the talk tonight about the Daniel Andrews legacy. Let's have a closer look now at that legacy, the Victorian economy, and how it suffered under his tenure and, of course, the budget. Between 2019 and 2022, Victoria's net debt grew from, grew from 5.5% of the state's economy to 19% of the state's economy. Forecasts suggest that net debt will reach a whopping 24.6% of the state's economy in two years' time. Now, as a result of all of this, Victoria's credit score was downgraded in 2020. It's now at its lowest point since 1999. And compared to all other states, Victoria has by far the most debt. Now, that is a leg legacy of shame. Joining me now to discuss this and more business commentator at the Herald Sun, Terry McCran. Well, you can't make up the numbers. The Premier can't bully the numbers to look any different in the budget papers. It's crook, isn't it? It's absolutely crook, Peter. And let me put those numbers into dollar terms. That debt that you referred to is at least $170 billion by 2026. It'll be much bigger than that. We know that. We've got this insane tunnel that's been built from Cheltenham to Box Hill, which has costed now more than... 120 billion. There's no way it's going to be built at that. Uh, it's going to cost much more than that. The debt is going to go over 200 billion dollars. We're going to be downgraded again, almost certainly, if not once, twice by the credit agencies. The cost of servicing that debt, which is money that's coming out of the pockets of every Victorian and has not been spent on ambulances. You think we need some improvement in our ambulance service, our hospitals, our schools, and so on? Dan Andrews' legacy can be summed up in one word, absolutely catastrophic. And, of course, we've got taxes uh, almost on everything in Victoria. We had a new Airbnb tax the other day. Uh, he's hit the work cover levy for employers. And we know the property taxes in Victoria have gone up astronomically. He's gone after schools, private schools, uh, thinks that rich parents can pay and even parents who struggle to send their kids to an independent school will be hit hard by these taxes. Is, is there any tax that Labor <laughs> isn't prepared to levy? No, of course not. And none of that has really touched the sides in mm. terms of actually dealing with the deficit and the debt. It's hurting Victorians, it's hurting business, it's hurting jobs, but it's not actually solving the problem because the sums needed are catastrophically, so catastrophically high. Right like if, if you were coming in... I guess, as Jeff Kennett did after the recession in Victoria in the 90s. How on earth do you turn, turn it around? Because I have to say, there's nothing left to sell. Well, it's brutal. Exactly, Peter. That's the other side of the equation. In 1992, when Jeff came in, we did have the state electricity system uh, uh, commission to sell, uh, which paid off much of the debt. We sold our state bank mm -hmm. back then because we had to. There's nothing like that now. The cupboard is bare. And there's... And the, and as you know, Dan Andrews is talking about bringing back the SEC in some form. Uh, where's that going to go? Uh, he's leaving saying that his proudest legacy is this housing package. Obviously, not a single house has been built It's uh, yet. And, and how many will be built and at what cost? I mean, the legacy he leaves behind, it's the most, the most extreme example of a poison chalice we've ever seen in Australian political history. All right, just a, a change of tack before we go. Look, uh, there was a report today polling in the Australian Financial Review. I think the pollster was, uh, was freshwater strategy. Uh, across the board now, there is support, uh, and we're including Greens voters in this as well, there is support for nuclear power in Australia. Why is it then that the community is well ahead of the politicians and can we get the politicians there? Well, I think we see that in, in the re reaction to COVID as well, Peter. Mm -hmm. the, the community is well ahead of the politicians. The politicians are now catching up by being sacked or leaving. Uh, yes, it's obviously fundamental. If we're not going to use coal and we're not going to use much gas, the only answer is nuclear and we have to go down that path. Mm -hmm. And in, most critically, Peter, we have to make nuclear affordable in the sense we don't bury it in red tape and green tape and black tape. 